So this is the first in a series of videos dealing with critical thinking as it applies to the intelligence community. And when I first started looking into critical thinking in the context of the intelligence community, I was skeptical about this idea of critical thinking because the way it had always been presented to me um, was what I, I've come to describe as sort of negative critical thinking. That information comes in and I've learned strategies to attack it, to look for bias, to look for weaknesses, and to sort of push back against that information that's coming in. And those are important skills, but I always worry that people apply them in a way that is maybe self-serving. So if there's information that comes in that I agree with, I just sort of let it roll in and I don't apply that sort of critical skills to, to, to poke at it to find out if it's actually good information. Whereas information that comes in that I disagree with or I don't want to believe, I now have built up an entire arsenal of tools to tear it down and give myself reasons why I shouldn't believe this information. So I was, was very critical that critical thinking, as was often taught in terms of these meta, uh, negative skills, would actually help improve reasoning. And one of the things that I found when I started looking at critical thinking in the context of the intelligence community is that there are those negative skills, but there's also a lot of focus on positive critical thinking, on how do you build up um, something useful from the information that you have, recognizing the limits and the weaknesses of that information, but what constitutes better arguments, better thinking, better reasoning, uh, and how do we strive for that and build that. And so that's kind of where we'll be going in, in this video and subsequent videos, and I'll be drawing pretty heavily on David T. Moore's uh, book, Critical Thinking and Intelligence Analysis, which you can grab online as a PDF. It's a government document, and so it's it's really publicly available. And Moore's book, which I've, I've gone through a couple times, does a variety of different things that don't always fit together very well, but collectively there's a lot of value there. So the first thing that he does is he provides a review of sort of the critical thinking li literature. He compares and contrasts different definitions of critical thinking and what are sort of the analytic um, and intellectual skills that go into that. We'll talk a little bit about that today. Second thing that he does is he provides a case study of how information was worked with in the context of the Cuban Missile Crisis and how the failure of critical thinking left the intelligence community um, struggling to make sense of what was happening or anticipate what was happening. Uh, the third is sort of an inside baseball reflection on how do you build critical thinking within the intelligence community. If you're not within the intelligence community, I don't know that this section is necessarily going to be of much interest to you, but the final section might be, um, because the final section is a syllabus for how do you build critical thinking um, and structured analysis that would make for a course on this uh, for the intelligence community. I found the syllabus and, and the readings associated with it to be incredibly useful. It's been my gateway in and my jumping off point for a lot of this work in terms of what is critical thinking look like in the intelligence community and in terms of intelligence analysis and what are the techniques that we can use to do the sort of positive critical thinking to build something useful uh, out of the information that we have. So I'll start with some quick definitions. These are uh, Moore's definitions, I should say, um, but I think they're useful and I'll be, um, when I'm referring to critical thinking and thinking, this is what I'm referring to. So thinking or reasoning involves objectively connecting present beliefs with evidence in order to believe something else, right? So I'm taking the information I have, I'm fitting it together, and I'm building a new idea out of it. Pretty straightforward. Critical thinking is actually doing two things, right? So there's the cognitive act of thinking, um, taking information, working with it, producing something else. But then there's also a deliberate metacognitive act where a person is reflecting on the quality of their own reasoning process. Um, and they're doing that while they're actually like doing the reasoning and coming up with a new conclusion. And so there's an awareness of what we're doing. There is an awareness of how we're thinking about and working with that information. And ideally, right, a recognition of this might be a potential problem or I'm doing this well, or this is the method I'm using. Um, and in theory, the awareness of our thought process will allow us to avoid um, mistakes. And I think uh, Moore does a good job laying out why we need to be aware of our thought processes and why a failure to be aware of our thought processes can potentially lead us astray. And so he talks about a couple modes of reasoning, um, which if you've had a, a research methods course are probably fairly uh, intuitive to, at least two of them are. He'll talk about uh, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Uh, and then there's a third one, abductive reasoning. And actually once once I sort of saw these three things together, it's like, oh, okay, I see why it's important to be cognizant of our mode of reasoning because we can, as people, frequently put things together and, and generate conclusions in a way that maybe isn't entirely valid 
and there's a sort of a logical trap that we can fall into that we might not realize. So if we're thinking about the inductive reasoning, the way that uh, Moore talks about this, he's talking about this in the context of that Cuban Missile case study where analysts were dismissing intelligence coming in from Cuba because they had sort of this bias that said intelligence from Cuba is oftentimes false or human intelligence from Cuba, right? So they're, they're starting with a case um, that uh, they have human intelligence from Cuba. Um, that information is found to be false, right? That's the result. And so they generate out of that process of here's some information that came in, I analyze that information, they're gonna generate a rule which says all human intelligence coming from Cuba is false. So essentially there was an inductive reasoning process in which we got burned in the past by human intelligence from Cuba. We're not gonna do it again. We're going to discount that information in the future. Uh, and that's a, a fairly intuitive mode of reasoning. It's the mode of reasoning that I think human beings use a lot to navigate and build understanding of our world uh, and generally is accepted as, as a, a valid form of reasoning. A second mode of reasoning um, is the deductive mode uh, in which we're going from a rule. I have a belief about this human intelligence from Cuba um, being false, uh, or all human intelligence from Cuba is being false, and I'm applying it to a particular case. Aha, here we have some human intelligence from Cuba. What do I know about that, or what do I think I know about that based on this rule that I have? Well, I am going to conclude that this human intelligence is false because I have this rule that tells me if it's coming from Cuba, it's probably false. Um, again, this is a, a widely accepted and valid form of reasoning. Um, and I think people apply pretty consistently, particularly when making forecasts or trying to extend um, past patterns into the future. There's a third mode of reasoning that is really tricky and we can easily get trapped in as human beings. It's abductive reasoning. And it starts with a rule uh, and assumes that it explains the result and therefore intuits something about the case, which is kind of a weird way of saying it. Um, so I'll stick with the Cuba example. So the rule is all human intelligence from Cuba is false. Um, and then someone says, this human intelligence is false. And you say, aha. Aha, false human intelligence. I bet it's coming from Cuba. That actually is not a crazy thing to intuit based on the rule all human intelligence from Cuba is false, but it ends up being sort of a set theory problem. And I won't go into the, the set theory Venn diagrams on it, but it assumes that there's only one way to get false human intelligence that false human intelligence can't be coming from Mexico or from Poland or from Canada, that false human intelligence can only come from Cuba. And if that's true, right, if human intelligence everywhere else in the world is accurate and good and right, then by telling me that this human intelligence is false and I have a rule, human intelligence from Cuba is false, I'm correct in intuiting that it's probably coming from Cuba. But that's rarely the world that we live in. Oftentimes in the world, there are more than one pathways to a particular outcome. And I think this can really lead us astray in abductive reasoning, where we can just flat out be wrong nine times out of 10. But it's also a concern for deductive reasoning, where if there's multiple ways to get to a particular result, then the rule that I'm bringing to the table might not be useful. It might be the wrong rule to bring to the table for that particular situation. Um, and likewise, when we're thinking about inductive reasoning and we're building rules, I may observe something and the relationship I'm work observing and the pattern that I'm intuiting from that might be true, but I may not have observed all the ways to reach that outcome. And so inductive and deductive reasoning, although they're more likely to be sound than abductive reasoning, may not be comprehensive in understanding the full complexity of a situation. Um, so I think that's a, that's a useful thing to be aware of in terms of how we as, as people can reason or work with information. The final thing I'll flag from um, Moore's book, for, for this video at least, uh, is this particular graphic, which I, I absolutely love, I think is fantastic, um, because it offers up a very intuitive set of standards of what constitutes better thinking and worse thinking. So better thinking is clear, worse thinking is vague. Uh, if you ask me what I think is going to happen and I hem and haw and I'm all over the place, that is a less useful response. That's less useful thinking. That's less useful um, information to a customer than if I'm able to provide clear 
uh, statements about what I think is going to happen. Accurate versus inaccurate. Again, I think that's a good standard that we should strive for accuracy in our uh, in our statements and our reasoning. Uh, precise versus imprecise. I think precise statements about what we think is going to happen are better statements than imprecise statements. And if we can improve the precision, we should seek to do that. Relevant versus irrelevant, right? This is important. If you're a customer looking at an intelligence product, you want to make sure that the information that uh, you would hope that the information that you're being given is germane to the problem, is germane to the question, is not going to waste your time focusing on things that are maybe interesting anecdotal backstory, but don't necessarily help you to, to form your, your understanding of the situation. So focusing on relevancy is important for good thinking. Um, deep versus shallow thinking, right? One of the analytic, uh, one of the cognitive uh, biases that can affect human beings is is shotgun thinking or shotgun reasoning, where we just sort of, you know, grab a, a simple surface level answer and use that as sort of our our, our answer to a to a question or to a problem uh, rather than thinking deeply about the complexity and the nuances of it uh, likewise broad versus narrow thinking right one of the, th uh, the techniques that we encourage folks to use is uh, steep analysis where you're looking at social technical economic environmental and political factors that might affect a, a question or a topic uh, or a situation and the, the idea of doing an analysis like that is it's forcing us to consider multiple different domains where there might be factors and that that's going to force us to think broadly about a question rather than just simply thinking about one of those domains and saying, oh, well, here's the economics of it. Therefore, I understand it because I've got a good handle on, on one narrow part of this problem. Uh, logical versus illogical. I think that's that's certainly useful um, as a standard for, for good thinking. Um, significant versus trivial. Uh, we can certainly generate a lot of analysis that tells us quite compellingly something that isn't important to know. That's not good thinking. That's not a good analysis. We should be focusing our attention on providing conclusions and judgments that are important and matter to the customers we're trying to serve with our reasoning and with our analysis. And then fair versus unfair, right? Are we considering the information and, and fairly, are we incorporating it into our analysis or are we actively excluding it because of the halo or including it because of the halo effect or the, the horn effect where we have sort of a bias about that information and therefore don't really incorporate it the way that we, we ought to because of our pre-existing beliefs about that. Okay, so there is a lot that was introduced here and it was introduced fairly superficially and we haven't really dug into some of the positive elements of critical thinking about how you do this more constructively. I'll have subsequent videos on analysis competing hypotheses and impact analysis and various different techniques for aggregating information. But I wanted to kind of get this conversation started thinking about critical thinking, not just as a process of um, I'm putting things together in reasoning, but I'm doing that in a conscious and intentional way where I'm, I'm aware of what I'm doing, I'm aware of the common pitfalls that can trip people up, and I'm trying to actively use a method to direct and guide my thinking so that I'm hopefully going to get results that look like those, those sort of blue standards rather than the red standards in our, our graphic of better critical thinking rather than worse critical thinking.